What's up everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna show you the resources and techniques I use to create bootleg style designs. This is a super trendy, popular style that has uh, taken over places like Urban Outfitters and Pac Sun in the last few years. I've had some really good luck with it and I'm gonna show you exactly how it's done. Let's go. <laughs> What's up everyone? In today's video, I'm basically going to break down how you can create uh, bootleg hip hop style designs. So this particular style uh, isn't exclusive to hip hop whatsoever. It's basically just the kind of vibe that's like 90s, um, sort of like streetwear influence, but mostly just made to look like kind of a cheaply made t-shirt. Obviously become really popular in Urban Outfitters and PacSun, Zoomies, places like that. And it's just a style that I get asked to do a lot. So I've gotten to be somewhat good at it. I would like to think at least. Um, so for this particular tutorial, I'm going to use um, Snoop Doggy Dog as the example because I have designed bootleg style t-shirts for Snoop Dogg. Um, I had one that ended up in Route 21, I believe. Another ended up in Kohl's. So I have had some success with it and I'm just gonna use the folder that they sent me and show you kind of what it looks like. Um, so you can, you know, go through here, you know, like logos, you know, album artwork logos, photos, iconic imagery that, um, you know, is basically free to use if you're actually, you know, commissioned to uh, design for Snoop Dogg. So what we're looking for here is basically photos that will work well. What I like to do, you know, there's a million different ways you can do a bootleg t-shirt design. Um, I have a whole inspiration folder that um, has some stuff in it already. So you can kind of get a feel for, you know, especially what works for retail. We've got this whole folder full of stuff. This is actually kind of a good example. Like this is clearly posterized in, um, you know, Photoshop, um, which is not really a technique that really would have been available back in the day. Um, I don't think at least, um, you know, that's a cool example. That's awesome. You know, what I love to do with bootleg t-shirts is use one photo like really big similar to this usher design uh one photo prominently in the um, background or foreground and then uh, a sm smaller photo either one or two to the side or something like that um this is a great example this is like one of the most iconic bootleg t-shirts of all time uh kanye wore this t-shirt at one point I've seen a ton of other celebrities wear it if you tried to buy this original t-shirt today, you'd probably have to spend at the very minimum like $1,500 uh, for a t-shirt. So I think that's definitely part of the reason why um, it's really been a popular style uh, in the last few years. So let's use this Tupac design as a reference and sort of use it as a guideline um, in making our bootleg t-shirt, okay? So we're gonna go back to Finder and we're gonna jump back into the Snoop Dogg assets and take a look at what photos might work. This is a pretty awesome photo. I think I used this for another t-shirt design for him. Um, that's usually not a problem, you know, if you're designing, um, I think I, I, I did six or eight designs for Snoop Dogg and you know, it's, kind of unavoidable to just <clears throat> reuse the same photos in at least, you know, one or two designs, if maybe three or four. Um, so let's use, I really like the straight on shot. That's pretty cool. Let's use that one. And the fact that it's uh, black and white doesn't matter because we're gonna be, be coloring this all in by hand anyways, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So first things first, we are going to create a new document, 15 by 25, of course, 
because you know that's what I like. If you've watched any of my previous videos, I always say 15 by 25 is the move. So what I did there was just grabbed, you know, the portion of the photo that we want to use, um, use the old rectangular marquee here, copy it, paste it over to the new document, and I'm gonna blow it up just a little bit. Um, nothing crazy. You don't wanna, you know, hopefully if you're doing um, a project for a bigger artist or you're doing your own, um, you know, bootleg style t-shirts, you're gonna wanna use photos that are as high of resolution as possible so that you can adjust them, um, you know, a little bit and you're not gonna lose a ton of resolution on it because they're pretty big in the first place. So, similar to this uh, Tupac design, you can see that the original photo has been cut out. So like the, the background has been completely cut out and um, we're left with just kind of Tupac's head and like some of his uh, shoulders. So we're gonna do the, that exact same thing to this photo. And um, I'm probably gonna end up speeding this part up, but I'll show you how to start. Th there's a few different ways that you can do this, okay? So my method is not necessarily the fastest, but it is what I've come to really find is best for me because I don't trust, you know, there's there's ways that you can quote unquote, remove the background from photos. You could go on YouTube and you can find tutorials about, you know, slick little ways to do it. But I personally don't, tr like I've tried that and it works sometimes if the background is already mostly like one color and it can work sort of like otherwise, like it might work on this photo, but I just don't trust that process. And I, if I, you want it to have really clean lines around the outside and you don't want to mess with it a ton afterwards, you just want to start the process, finish it and be done. In my opinion, this is the best way to do it. So bear with me, I'll probably end up speeding this part up just so, you know, it doesn't take, it, take up a bunch of time. So first thing I'll do is just grab like a color that is unlike anything else in the photo. And I'm gonna use the brush tool and go down to like, uh, like a smaller size, maybe like in this case, uh, yeah, let's just go 40 just for the sake of easy math. And then we're gonna create a new layer above the photo. And I'll literally just zoom in and by hand this like, just draw like this. Wherever, um, you know, I want to cut, I just draw around it. And you're probably thinking, holy shit, this would be really tedious if it was like a band photo, you know, and there's like four or five guys, sometimes more. Um, and yeah, it is sort of tedious, but if you really want um, you know, to do this the right way, in my opinion, this is, this is ultimately the easiest, it's like the easiest, hardest way to do it, <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, and we are finishing it up right there. Okay, so... I've got this outline done. And like I said, as you can imagine, if you're working with like a band or something like that, it's gonna take longer to do this, but you'll just have to trust me that like, it's gonna make things a lot easier ultimately in the end. Like just doing some of this um, grunt work up front is gonna make things a lot easier um, as you, you know, create your entire design. So once you have the, um, your outline done, what I'll do is just go over to the magic wand tool and uh, click inside of that area and go down to background and do command uh, J. That'll basically create the shape of the um, photo, right? And I'll just place it over it. And you'll see like, if you actually zoom in here, it's not like perfect. There's a little gap here. Um, so I'll just go in and like add a stroke 
Um, I'll just use the same color red and then I'll make the fill red as well just so you can see exactly what's going on. Not there, there you go. Um, so yeah, basically here we're just trying to make sure this is a solid um, shape. So you can see the stroke going away right there. So now we have a nice blob of red that we will now be um, using the clipping mask tool. Um, have your blob of red or you know whatever color you used underneath the photo. Click the original photo, right click, create clipping mask, and then you'll see it takes on the shape, right? So like I said, it's, you know, pretty damn clean if you really took your time and like made sure, you know, you um, made the correct shape and everything like that and you didn't like go outside of the, the main part of the image. Um, if you need to edit anything, you know, all you have to do is go down to the shape and, you know, you can kind of brush where you need to. See here, I want to make these lines a little bit more um, um, straight and, like, smooth. We don't want these, like, kind of breaks here. Ultimately, it's not going to make a huge difference, you know, if there's, like, little bumps, but you might as well just make it as, like, smooth as possible. So, anyways... Now we have our main uh, imagery, right? So I'm just gonna group these in case I wanna use them later and I'm gonna duplicate that group so that I can go back to this if I decide, you know, later on to, I don't know, do whatever. It's just always good to um, duplicate things in my opinion before you make like any serious edits. So I'm gonna convert this main image to a smart object and I'm going to adjust the brightness and contrast so that the black um, of the photo is like truly black, so it could just be the t-shirt, right? Now we don't want too much of the details to go away because um, in my opinion, like if you look at a lot of like bootleg t-shirts, you'll see like a pretty decent amount of detail still in it. So you don't want to like wash that away, you know? So from here, what I'll do is, um, start creating like the rest of it. And like, I think for the sake of this tutorial, I'll probably just jump right into the coloring aspect of it so you guys can understand that. Um, we'll uh, close that tab there. So what I like to do is color things by hand, um, which again can be somewhat time consuming, but it allows for a lot more flexibility than trying to go in and like, you know, go to like adjustments, photo filter, or selective color and like change things around. Like I've done that technique in the past and it's fine, but I've just learned over time that like, I think what works better is just coloring things in my hand because you have way more flexibility. So in order to color things by hand, I'm going to, let's just name this Snoop main photo. I'm going to create a new layer above my main photo, and then I'm gonna right away create a clipping mask, and I'm gonna change it to multiply because we're basically just going to be more or less painting in this area, um, this photo, and, you know, creating skin tones, and, you know, we can make the hoodie whatever color we want. Um, basically, like with bootleg t-shirts, I found it best to stick to maybe uh, I don't know, like no more than five colors, I would say. I mean, there's definitely like full color um, bootleg t-shirts out there, but I just think as far as retail is concerned and like in terms of um, keeping things screen print friendly, it's just smarter to um, limit your color use. I just think it looks cooler too, you know. That's one thing about retail that you have to keep in mind is like, they're thinking about the consumer and not, you know, every consumer is gonna be down with like a, a shirt that has, you know, a million colors on it because people wanna be like, you know, they wanna be fashionable and it's probably, you know, it's just like safer to use just a few colors so that it's a little bit more, um, I don't know, I guess commercially 
viable. So now you can see like it's starting to look closer to like this, you know, as opposed to um, a fully colorized photo of Snoop, you know? So from here, you know, we could even, just for the sake of this tutorial, you know, I don't recommend using the same colors as another well-known bootleg t-shirt by any means, but you know, you could use some of them for sure. So from here, you can do another layer and you know, you could name this skin tones, um, you know, layer, um, naming your layers and all that stuff is just a good habit to get into. It's not completely necessary, um, but if you're doing something that's a little bit more um, involved like this, where you're gonna, you know, definitely have like tons of layers and things like that, um, it's a pretty good idea. So here we just did like the hat and on the eyes and the face, um, you know, I basically just painted it literally like you were doing like <clears throat> paint by number or something, you know? So we're just gonna keep doing this process of creating new layers, making the blend mode multiply, and, um, you know, just painting, you know, uh, Snoop's clothes. Like, we can have fully, this is fully flexible, you know, you could uh, pick any color scheme you want and as long as you're like paying attention not like accidentally going like that it's gonna be awesome it's gonna work good so there we've got our main you know snoop image looks pretty dope um I think we're gonna end up putting text down at the bottom because, you know, we don't want all of this, um, you know, ink to be here when it's printed on a t-shirt. One thing I'll probably just do really quickly is throw a gradient on, the, on this bottom area. Um, yeah, it looks like on the Tupac one, they just have it cut off like that. That's kind of hard to get away with in my opinion. Like, so, Let's uh, reset this real quick. So, there we go. So I'm just gonna throw a gradient on this bottom. So basically I just have the top layer uh, color swatch over here is black. So that when you go into your gradient overlay, you can just select this one uh, in the middle here that is just one color black and then transparent. So it looks like that in your like gradient bar. And then I'll move the scale down so that it's just like kind of fading on the bottom there, right? You see how if you have it up there, it doesn't allow you to do that. But if you pull the scale, the percentage down, um, you can just have like a nice little clean fade at the bottom. So that's probably the move here. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, yep, that's what we want. Okay, so from here, and I'm just gonna save this really quick. Computer's gonna think about it. Okay, I'll just save it to the desktop. I'm just gonna save this in case anything crazy happens uh, and Photoshop fails or something. So, from here, I think I'm ready to add some text down at the bottom. So. Let's go back to our fonts in use and look at what might work. Um, you know, it's awesome if you wanna use the official logos for, you know, the artist or whatever. But if we're trying to get this bootleg vibe, you know, why not use something from the 90s, from the 80s? So I think I already have in mind what I wanna use, but this is a really good resource for just getting ideas aside from having your inspirations folder because you might not necessarily know what the actual fonts are. Um, I've, I've kind of been doing this long enough that I know at this point like some of the main fonts for bootleg t-shirts. Um, review gets used a lot. Um, you know, Mistral, you know, it's the NWA font gets used a lot. Cooper Black, yep, is used a lot. Um, any sort of wide font, um, 
like wide um, serif fonts are used a lot as long as they're not like super like classy and thin like most bootleg t-shirts have like a pretty bold style font sometimes it's literally just like aerial font um, aerial bold or something like that or black rather aerial black helvetica things like that so in this case we are gonna go with um, let's go with review okay so oops, okay so this is kind of a cool technique I'm gonna show you right now. So let's just use review, should already have it, yep. And we're just gonna write, no, let's no all caps. Yeah, let's just go all caps. So we're gonna just write snoop. Actually, I think what might be cooler is if we made Snoop really big above above his head, like that, and just had Doggy Dog under it. Yeah, that's the move. I love doing that too, just because um, that'll also give us the opportunity, if we want, to switch this font up to something else so it's not as boring. But what I wanted to show you guys was a cool technique that I'll use sometimes. Um, that definitely gives it more of a, a bootleg vibe. It's kind of similar to what's going on here, um, where, uh, you know, you can have it straight like that, you can arch the text or whatever. I think we're gonna do a little flag, kind of like the Tupac um, design, and not do too much. Just a little bit, nothing crazy. So you wanna make sure when you're doing this uh, technique to try to have all of the um, text have the kerning, which means the spacing between the characters be pretty close to the same. So I had to adjust that P a little bit because it was a little further away from the O than we wanted. And now everything is essentially pretty close. So, first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this Snoop text, and then I'm gonna make it a different color. So let's just use the red like we used on the outline here when we were cutting out the photo. And we're just gonna, I'm just gonna hold down shift and use the arrow keys and just like bump it down a little bit. So we're basically creating like a shadow. Um, the reason I don't use the actual shadow like style you know, drop shadow is, it's, I just find this a lot more easy to use. Like, I like being able to just like bump things around with the arrows. I don't like having to open this up and like, you know, um, move it to where I want it. And then like, oh, I don't like how that looks. And then go back and do it all again. This way I can just like do it super quickly. So from here, we're basically going to connect all these letters and to do that, I'll go and make a new layer above the, um, the red shadow kind of layer here. And I'm just gonna use the polygonal lasso tool and start connecting things, right? Connect the edges of the letters to the other edges, like the corresponding edges, right? So like, we're gonna connect this part of the letter S to the same part in the shadow. And we're going to continue to do that for every area. So just like this, just connect them, okay? And again, this is something that's like a bit tedious, but if you really want to do this stuff right, you have to do this kind of work and it is going to pay off in the end, you know? You don't want to just like rush through things and try to cut corners, um, you know, every chance you get. If you really want to do it right, you got to put in the work. So I'm probably going to speed this up. Actually, no, I don't need to speed this up. This is Snoop 
is a short enough word that I can just do this quickly. So, yep, connect that there, connect the bottom of this P, connect the top here. And um, you also don't want to forget about um, some areas that are covered. So you can go up to the top layer here, the top snoop text, and just make it transparent momentarily, and then go back down to your um, layer underneath and connect these two. So that's always, it's really important, especially when you're working with like real ornate typography and there's like a lot of um, swooshes and swoops and um, you know, kind of classical ornate elements. So anyways, we basically have um, the connecting areas ready to go. And so now I'll just fill them in. So you basically have like this kind of three dimensional um, drop shadow here. It looks like we need to, this is kind of tricky. Yeah, this okay, cool. So, and I'll probably just draw in here just because it looks weird with that little gap. So, this is pretty cool. You could leave it like this, and what I'm gonna do is just combine these two layers so that we don't have two separate layers for the shadow, because now it's just one thing. So, you could, you know, just like make this, you know, green or make it, well, green would make sense with the hoodie there, but like, you know, make it like blue. Blue looks kind of dope. Um, yeah, whatever, let's let's use a blue color. That's pretty cool. So you could leave it like this, so it's actually similar to this Tupac idea. Um, but what I like to do from here is um, merge your shadow layer and I'll do a stroke outside of it in um, the same color as the shadow layer. So that kind of gives it like another dimension, you know, to it. That's pretty cool there. So, you know, that's one thing you can do. You can, you can add it, leave it, doesn't matter. Like, I think in this case, I might just leave it off, but that's just another element that you could add to this, right? So, we've got our main text. Like I was saying before, um, now we have license to kind of make this bottom text whatever we want. Um, I think I'm gonna go with uh, stencil, which is actually army regular. And I believe that was on here as well. Yeah, because it was a uh, public enemy used that oh, it's on the first page yeah it's the public enemy font essentially um, so you'll see this used a lot in bootleg stuff so you know we could leave it straight you know it definitely for the sake of readability it's not a bad idea and it's just kind of making the whole thing look pretty like um, pleasing to the eye overall you know what I'll probably do is like, you know, you could make it black and then do a stroke around it. That could be cool, right? Yep, and then maybe do another shadow, but not do the connecting thing here because it just doesn't, it's not gonna look the same. You know, something like that. Pretty simple. Um, another cool thing that you can do is inlay a photo into the text. If you have like really big text, I've done that in the past. It looks pretty cool. We probably won't be doing that for this tutorial because I'm gonna try to keep things as simple as possible so you guys can just like really knock this stuff out and make like some cool um, stuff happen. So from here, you know, we've only got the one photo. We could definitely, we'll definitely want to add another photo, you know, somewhere on the side. I'm thinking we can add it right here. So let's just bump Snoop over a little bit. And then what I kind of do here is just a little trick that um, will allow us to not lose any of the imagery by just 
straight up erasing it. But since I already have this gradient layer um, fading out the bottom, I'll group it again. So it's a group within a group. And then I'll do another um, gradient layer on this and we'll do it on the side so that um, basically the side fades out the same way the bottom does. And then that way, you know, we're not gonna lose any of the image if we wanna go back and, and use the whole thing. It's as easy as just toggling off the gradient overlay, right? So basically all we're trying to do here, is just fade it out on the side so that it just looks a little bit more natural. So now we've got a nice, you know, kind of layout going. And let's um, go back and grab this, grab another photo. So from here, we will want something that's a little bit more, that's a little further away. This one's actually pretty good. And it's like already cut out. So it's nice, we already have it cut out so we don't have to go through that whole process again. Um, you know, we could add it. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look too great above it. So let's just keep, let's just keep it in the background. And looking at um, this Tupac example, they went and colored the whole thing. You know, it was probably just a real photo that, you know, I guess, I don't know, was manipulated or something back in the day. And it's kind of hard for me to say the exact technology because I wasn't alive, but I mean, I was alive, but like I wasn't doing t-shirts. <laughs> So with this, you can definitely add some more dimension to it. Um, like you could just take his head and use the um, polygonal lasso tool and just grab like this part of his head and I'm just gonna do Command J and move it up to the top. So it's like hanging over. Just, this is strictly just to see how this might look. Uh, truthfully, it looks kind of weird. It maybe could work. I don't know, I don't really love it. So instead, let's just make like, let's maybe use the blue from this and put that as the background. That's not terrible. Um, I think I'm gonna end up using three photos in total on this. So basically to make um, the photo in the background this blue color, all I did was use um, multiply as my blend mode and uh, or rather my color overlay. No, color overlay, blue, blend mode, multiply. That's what I meant, okay. So, now we've got this kind of blue image in the background. We could, you know, mess with the contrast a little bit and maybe make it um, a little bit more um, like black and white ultimately, make it pop a little bit more. It was already pretty good, um, so it might not need to mess with it a ton, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So from here, I'm already thinking about some of these other bootleg examples that um, will have like a shape in the foreground and um, an image. That's, I think, this dude, Corey Thomas, I think did that one. He's a designer uh, that's sort of a peer of mine and his bootleg shit rocks. So shout out to Corey. Um, I guess there's not an example here, but sometimes what you'll see is like, just like a shape in the foreground, you know, sometimes just like a circle. And I think in this case, that's gonna look really nice. So let's just use the shape tool, make a circle. And then we're gonna go back to the photos and find another picture of Snoop from this era. That's the other important thing you wanna consider is like, if you're doing a bootleg t-shirt, try to make like all the photos kind of from the same era, like in, in general. So I'm not gonna use like a, one picture of Snoop Dogg from when he's, you know, 20 and then another photo from when he's like 50. It's not gonna look very cool. That's a pretty iconic photo, but let's try to use something, that's a pretty good one. Let's try to use stuff that's all within the same like G-Funk, um, you know, doggy style era. So from here, all I did was the same thing that we did initially, you know, use the rectangular marquee tool, grab, you know, this little bit that we want here, command copy, bring it over into our document. We've got our shape here. 
and I'm just gonna Command V and paste it on there. And then I'm gonna do right click, create clipping mask, and that'll allow us to just move it into this circle, okay? So I'm gonna convert to a smart object, the same thing we did with this photo originally. And, you know, just kind of position it how we want it. It's not gonna be full color, you know, so keep that in mind. And that's pretty good. I think that could be done. So then I'm gonna do Command U on our new Snoop photo. I'm gonna take the saturation down to negative uh, 100, so it's just purely black and white. Let's mess with the brightness and contrast a little bit. That's just image, brightness, and contrast. All right, so getting that black and white there again. And I think in this one, we're gonna wanna use um, the same coloring process we used for this original photo. So if you remember how to do that, we basically just create a layer above the photo that we're going to be um, coloring in. And then we're gonna create a clipping mask, change the blending mode uh, to multiply on our layer, coloring layer, and go back to this brown that we used for his skin tones um, and do the exact same process here. Oh, not black, there we go. Okay. And, um, you know, hopefully these, these uh, videos that are a little bit longer are um, helpful to you guys. You know, I'll definitely edit, you know, wherever I see fit, but if a part is running a little bit longer, um, you know, it's just because I want you guys to really see how this stuff works and I don't, I just don't want to like skip over anything that maybe you guys want to see. And you know, if if you're um, watching this and you see what's going on and you, you know, know where I'm headed with something, just, you know, skip ahead. But, um, you know, I suggest definitely watching um, these videos like all the way through if you really want to see how this shit goes down. And again, there are so many ways to like do this stuff. My way isn't the right way, it's just the way I do it. So whatever works for you, dope. Okay, so we're just, you know, we're almost done here, coloring skin tone for Snoop. And, you know, we could make his hoodie the same here, but I think it's gonna look cooler if we use like this blue for his hoodie in this particular image. So we're gonna do the same thing we did for the skin tones, layer above it, clipping mask, multiply, and boom, start coloring it in. Um, and you can definitely like go the extra step and remove the background on this. I think it, it kind of adds to it because it's a little bit like, you know, gritty and is obviously reminiscent of like the original um, photos. Looks like I got a little bit of skin on the hoodie here, so we're gonna just delete that, and erase it rather. Come back to coloring the hoodie. Good. You just wanna be like real sort of meticulous with this, you know, wherever you can be. Um, like I, I have said in previous videos, the devil really is in the details on this stuff. Like if you just do it right the first time, um, it's gonna pay off tenfold and you're gonna be way happier with it because, um, you know, while it might not be noticeable to other people, it's gonna be noticeable to you and you're gonna know that like you could have, <laughs> just took in your time and, and really done it the right way, but you didn't and it'll drive you fucking crazy. It'll be like, you know, telltale heart type thing. Shout out to Edgar Allan Poe. So from here, um, let's make his chain um, this yellow color. That just sort of worked out nicely for us. You know how this goes. So 
this is gonna be a little bit tricky. Like I said, just try to get it as close as possible. Especially like if you're just submitting designs to get approved. Um, because, you know, whoever's receiving them isn't gonna see the original file and like see like, oh, looks like you went outside the lines right here. Like, um, you know, you can get away with, with just getting it like 90, you know, percent of the way there. And when you zoom out, it's like pretty clear like that it's just fun. So, um, you know, I don't love that the background here is like white. So, mm, I don't know what to do. Maybe like use this, we could try using this yellow color um, in the background here too. See how that looks? I guess that yellow works. I think if this were something I was really gonna be submitting and it wasn't just for the sake of this tutorial, I would try, uh, you know, a million things right here. I would definitely, I'd probably try some different colors. I would try maybe like a pattern behind him instead of this brick wall. I don't know, I have a few ideas, but I think just for now, we're gonna leave this yellow cause it is kind of a nice balance between the yellow at the top and then you get a little yellow at the bottom and you get it at the very bottom on the text. So I think we can uh, just leave it how it is. So now we've got this circle with the new Snoop photo in it. We're gonna bump it down a little bit there. And I'm going to add a stroke around it. So it add, adds kind of another dimension. Um, first, I'm gonna do a black stroke. And let's do eh, 15 will probably work. And then I'm going to group this again. And that'll allow me to make another stroke around the outside. Um, so you'll have that inner black stroke and um, you know one on the outside as well, which I think is a nice little touch. So what would work? Yellow, yellow's not bad. What's green look like? No, I don't love green. Um, I kind of like this actually. I'm gonna leave this as yellow, okay? So let's just save this really quick. All right, so from here, you can see that like, it's definitely got that bootleg feel. So from here, I'm gonna throw um, a texture over the top. So we're gonna go into our handy um, 15 vintage textures uh, available now on Creative Market. And we're gonna use, what would be good here? This rough wall one's always a go-to. Uh, I'm thinking maybe the soft grunge though will work good. So let's bring that into Photoshop. And if you watched my other tutorial on using vintage textures or any sort of textures with um, a mask, the masking tool, that's what we're gonna do right now. So we're going to Command A, grab this texture, go back to our bootleg design. We're gonna group everything together. We're gonna go down here to um, add a layer mask, click that. And we're gonna hold down the option key. We're gonna click this white box. We're gonna command V to paste our texture in here. Then we're going to hold down option, click this again to go out of it. And we have our texture in the design. So from here, I'm just gonna kind of move it around, see where it looks best. Um, that's pretty good. I like when there's like a nice chunk. Oh, that's pretty good. I like how the heavier chunks land right on the O's here, that's pretty cool. Just bring it down. Um, I don't like how this is like, there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, the distress being like super heavy in areas, but I don't like to make it so that you can't even make out what something is. So I'm just gonna grab like a little bit from here, edit a few things. So what I recommend if you don't, see like what exactly I'm doing is go watch my video on using textures in Photoshop because I show you exactly what I'm doing and um, it's a really simple way to like manipulate textures and get everything exactly how you want it just like I'm doing right now. So I mean that's pretty good right there. Um, you know I wouldn't have a problem sending it just like this. I think there's definitely 
um, other areas here where you could add more details. You know, for example, I could make like the zipper here white to sort of match this hat. Um, I could make this background image instead of just straight blue, I could do like a gradient of green to blue. There's a ton of things um, that you could do to make, to kind of go the extra mile. But the purpose of this tutorial was basically just to show you guys how you can um, set up the sort of bootleg style um, and, you know, really kind of capture the essence of, of 90s um, bootleg, specifically in this case, bootleg hip hop t-shirts. So that is it for today. Um, I hope, you know, this video wasn't too long and you guys were able to get some actionable stuff from this that you can apply to your own design work in the future. So uh, I would appreciate it, you know, if you like this video, subscribe, like, um, leave a comment and let me know, you know, if you found this useful or if there's something you want, you want to see in the future, like, um, more done in detail, something slowed down, anything like that. I'm open to all suggestions. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate you guys. Um, that is it. Peace.